Idan Sharabi Shalom. And welcome to Culture Bus. We can easily say welcome to Israel because you came back about two years ago mm -hmm. from eight long years in abroad. Mm -hmm. Holland and the Big Apple. And the Big Apple. How was it? It was great. I had a really good time. And how did how did it affect your dance? Both dancing and choreographing. Um, it affected me enormously because I uh, I studied it in New York and then I uh, I studied it in New York and I uh, I danced in Holland. So I, uh, I learned a lot from living abroad and, uh, and dancing abroad and choreographing abroad. And for Vidan Sharabi, it all started in Israel? Yes. With Bacheva, was it? No, actually I ended up coming back to Bacheva. So where did it start? Two years ago. It started in Tel Mayali. Tel Mayali. I'm from Askeret Batya. And I... Yeah, I went to Tel Mayali Arts High School. And from there I went to Julia New York. And then to NDT in Boston. And... I know, Idan, that you are uh, making your first steps when it comes to forming what seems to be like the beginning of a dance company? Yeah, I really hope so. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to form a company somehow in Israel, I guess. People coming from all over the world? Yes, we have uh, dancers coming from New York, Bern, Geneva, Ireland. And the purpose is performing in a festival in, in Belgrade. Belgrade. Yeah. I'm hoping to perform it also before in Israel, since we're working so hard for this production. Uh, the, the festival in Belgrade, the dance festival in Belgrade, um, invited me to create a full evening, which is a huge opportunity, so everybody's coming to Israel for this. Fantastic. Three works by you? Three, it's called, the evening is called Three Works by Dan Shalabi. And uh, I guess the so-called company is called Dan Shalabi and Dancers. We're still trying to get there. And um, that's why I'm hoping that we could have also a show in Israel before, after all the work we're doing for the festival. And in a way, we can thank the international exposure that took place last uh, December? In a huge way, yes. Uh, the festival manager came to me right after International Exposure Festival. Uh, she was very excited, and uh, yes, I am very excited that it's happening. Wonderful. Definitely, huge thing. Wonderful. Here comes the unfair uh, question, and I apologize in advance. Okay. <laughs> I'm always intrigued. Dancing or choreographing? If you had to choose. Fortunately, you don't have to. Uh, first of all, I was dealing with an injury, and I'm still dealing with an injury. This is my fifth year dealing with an injury, so sometimes it's only choreographing. But uh, it's an unfair question also because it's inevitable. I don't think you can choreograph without dancing. And I don't think dancing is, has to be that physical. Like I don't, think, I don't think you need to dance as physical as you can choreograph for other people to be that physical. Also, I found myself creating uh, in other ways when I was injured. So you can always choreograph when you don't dance. I started video editing and uh, creating on video when I couldn't move, so it's possible to do it without dancing. Can we talk influences and inspirations and role models <laughs> for you, <laughs> to you? Uh, yes. I have huge role models in the dance world, but... Um, I have also really big ones outside of the dance world, such as uh, Quentin, Quentin Tarantino. He's the filmmaker? Huge, yeah. For me, he's like uh, somebody I really, I really appreciate his uh, making. He's really... Uh, and 
then in the dance scene of Hyde and, uh, and Yeri, I really What's my read? These are two role models that I, I had the honor to work with also. Um, but I think even if I didn't work with them, they would still be my models. <laughs> Yeah, I just like the honesty in their work. Also in Pantita and Dino's work. Very honest. Yes. Some, yeah, say, honest. So, some may say too honest. Too honest, yes. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. Bloody yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody honest, good one. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, dance is a cosmopolitan language. And I wanted to ask you, when you look at your work, and you've been abroad, can you identify the Israeli component in your work? What, let, let me rephrase it. What's in Idan Sharabi's work is, if at all, Israeli. I apologize. <laughs> no, no. It, this is not for you. The, it's because I'm asking myself the same question. I've been so much abroad and I've been almost brought up since I'm 17 abroad by a culture shock I had in New York when I was so young. And then I feel very international somehow. On the other hand, everywhere I went, I didn't really get along, so I was a good Israeli. <laughs> I got along, you know, fine. Uh, I was always Israeli everywhere. They, uh, everywhere they called me an Israeli. And the way I move and the way I uh, communicate, so somehow the component is there. I don't know how to name it or how to point it. Pinpointed or... Maybe we should leave it to the audience and to the critics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. Idan, what can we wish you? <laughs> yeah, happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to your work. Also a Happy New Year. And uh, what can we wish you? Uh, that this uh, group will happen. That it could be somehow financially stable. I don't know um, how uh, exactly to get there. I'm actually not, well, it's more a matter of organization. I don't need the stability on the finance. Like I want to get there as slow as it should go or as slow as it should take, but uh, I want to wish for myself the organization, the ability to organize it all, to get things together somehow faster. There's a lot of uh, things, to, there a lot of administrative work to do, but I don't really know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is part of, uh, yeah. of, the, of the real world. Yeah. So we wish you, we wish you dead and much more. All the success in the world. Toda rabba, Inshallah. Toda rabba.